Hey guys, what is up? Dave here, back to you with another video on the channel, and today I'm going to explain how D4 Dot is still a fantastic the obfuscator in 2021. I have been trying to learn the more code side of things. That was terrible English and grammar, but deal with it. For doing FRP bypasses. And I really wanted to understand how Samsung devices, how people make Samsung devices, bypass FRP by bringing a pop up on the screen, even though USB debugging isn't enabled. And I discovered they use something, something that all these tools have in common. If you, well, that one doesn't. But something that all these tools have in common is this Linux ADK. And this Linux ADK thing, if you look it up, Linux ADK. You can actually find it right on GitHub, and it explains it here how to use it. But I've never quite gotten it to work manually with like a batch file or something like that. And the moment that I do, I'm going to make a video and I'll show you guys how it works. But for right now, I don't, I still don't understand how it works. And it, I mean, it even shows me here how to use it, but. I've tried and I don't understand it. So if there's somebody that's a subscriber to me and this video still doesn't make sense uh, afterwards, let me know if you understand how to use it because I don't. So anyway, all these tools have this thing in common. So I've been actually admittedly trying to leech the code from other FRP tools because I know this works on more than just Samsung devices. But all of these tools are locked to Samsung devices. And if you want to do it on more than just a Samsung phone, you have to pay for a tool that flashes up as a virus on your computer anyway. So I don't want to run that on my computer. I don't. So I finally found a tool that I could bypass and view the code. Because if you open this, for example, you see it's all messed up and I can't see the code at all because this is very well obfuscated. It is C-sharp coded, uh, as an old version of this did leak the source code, but it did not use Linux ADK to bypass. And then this one just doesn't use that at all. It's some trickery download mode version thing that only worked on really old Samsung devices. And then I found Samfirm, which I kind of forgot about this tool. And as you can see, if you open this up, you're greeted by a whole bunch of junk. You're greeted with a whole bunch of junk. There's no way to really go through this and easily understand what you're reading. So I was sitting here and I was scratching my head. How do I go about this? How do I get this to be readable code? And it did take me a minute to remember iPhone device. Why is this detecting iPhones? Does this do more than not Samsung phones? I've never used this tool because I don't trust it. Um, and that's the other reason I want the code. All of these programs flash up on your antivirus and just all of them have viruses in them. So I don't want to use them. I want to make my own that we can all trust. So with that, I decided, oh yeah, D for dot exists. Let me run it through D4 dot. So as you'll see, where's my D4 dot folder? I'm gonna delete this one. And as you can see, this li library folder has so much stuff in it. I device, debug, it, this tool does a whole bunch of stuff, which is really cool. I go here and I just simply drag and drop this on top of D4 dot. It actually does deobfuscate it and clean it to the point that This is so much better looking. So let's look at a pen dialog box, which is probably the first thing we saw. Look at this. It's literally legible code. You can read this. There's no problem with it. If we go under class 31, there's this simple thing. It's Samfirm, AIO, beta, whatever. Class 32. Yeah, all the methods are kind of changed and their names look like this, but that's okay. It's, honestly, that's okay. It's not a big deal. 
like all these key things. It tries to get all this info when you plug in the phone. Really cool. It'll tell you if your Knox warranty is tripped, which is awesome. And these are things that I've always wanted to make. It'll tell you the version of Android that's on your device. That is really cool that it actually detects this. It'll go up to Pi and then 10, 11, 12. That's really cool. So this is a very up-to-date tool, actually. I actually really like how this looks. Ooh, imei.bat. So this is very readable code now, and this is why I wanted to figure this code out. In libadb, I don't see imei.bat in here. IMEI at bat does not exist all right that's uh interesting that that doesn't exist at all in here but that's okay i wonder what l.apk is like i want to go through here and really dig deep into what this program is and what it does but you know now i actually can see how this all works lib root there is a simple root exe there is not. Like, where are all these tools that it says are supposedly in here? I bet I know. Hold on. Look at this. Open? No, they're not in here either. Okay. Strange. Who knows where all that stuff is? Anyway, the most important thing that I wanted to do with this is that Linux ADK crap. So, right in the main form, Linux ADK is right here. Awesome. And I don't know how I didn't realize that... Wait. Main form. There it is. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff here that I have to go through. Alright. Well, let's look at G-Class Do Work, which is in the main form. It's the very first... Uh, it's like right here or something. As you can see... The way this actually works is really interesting. I'll be honest with you. So I've looked into this in the past, and I kind of understand how it works, kind of don't. As you can see from the software right here, so we scroll all the way the hell up. So what it's basically doing is it's looking for the MTP port of the device, which is really smart. That's the information that you need. And it's looking specifically for Samsung for some reason. But you, like I've said, I've seen this tool for other models. Wow, they have everything here. That's awesome. So follow instructions below. Turn the device on and wait for it to start up completely. Activate Wi-Fi connection and connect to it. Click OK. So it really wants Samsung. That's all it wants. Searching for connected MTP device. If it's not Samsung, I don't think it moves forward. But let's find out. Let's find the for each if manufacturer contains Samsung. It runs it. So let's see. It goes into try. But I want to know what happens if it's not a Samsung with this tool. Catch it throws an exception and doesn't tell you why. Okay. That's really stupid. You should at least put a reason in the catch. So... I will explain how this works here in a moment. I'm just looking at it to try to get it. Some newer Samsung phones, this doesn't work anymore. But I'm going to explain how this works. So, as you can see, it's looking for Samsung devices specifically. So it's going to go through, connect to the MTP device, and see what the brand is. As long as it is Samsung, it'll move forward to this if statement and tell you brand, model, serial number, uh, software version, and Samsung in string 62, like it's supposed to. Then it will try to do the FRP pop-up on screen. So what it basically does is it looks for the media device connected. And then 
runs all this info through again, gets all that info, failed to connect to MTP device or looking for ports. As long as it worked, it looks for the Samsung Android.inf and it looks like it deletes it. Which I'm not going to say is surprising because it has to. Because it has to put it in a certain mode that the normal Samsung driver doesn't allow. So it'll install the INF of these files right here. Start the device. And it will send this URL to the device because it needs to open up the actual YouTube app. Then it'll do dash D and do all this. It'll send the Linux ADK information. It'll turn it on into accessory mode, which is what's needed for it to bypass the uh, FRP and show the pop-up. That's what the actual Samsung um, driver doesn't allow is accessory mode. But once you're in that accessory mode, it will uninstall and reinstall the old drivers. And you'll be able to actually get in there and, yeah, bypass the FRP, which is very simple. So I'm actually really surprised how well d dot ripped this down. And actually, there's a lot of buttons in here. There's... ADB bypass, which does something here. Oh, it takes it to recovery to sideload the vendor key. Uh, what is it sideloading? Oh, it's just probably, who knows? This gets all the ADB information, it looks like. Oh, they all go to that. C lock. You know what? For you guys, I'm going to run it. We're going to run this and we're going to look at the code as we look at it. Ooh, a new update. I do not want to download it now, but I will later. So, as you can see, there's a lot of software flashing tools in here. There's actually Apple stuff in here, which is really nice. Three U tools. By far the best tool there is for Apple software stuff. I really wish there was a dark version of this tool. I really do want to see if I can remake this tool and not have it pop up on uh, not have it pop up as a virus because then we can all trust it and use it as a community. Samsung drivers, FRP APKs, these are pretty much useless anymore. These FRP APKs don't do anything. They honestly really don't. All FRP bypasses can be done without installing an APK. As far as I have seen so far, the only ones that I ever have trouble with are um, Motorola's out of all things. Motorola's are the ones that give me the biggest headache. I wonder if it has, it doesn't seem like those are patched versions, which patched ones are the ones you want. Samsung firmware, you can actually download firmware in this tool. That's really cool. Do not want that. If you want United States, the best one you want to download is USC or XAS. USC is going to be the fully unlocked version. Or you can actually auto detect. That's really nice. And Apple stuff. Ah, oh, cool all the way up to the 12 Pro Max in here. Model number, it has iPad info, iPods, that's really cool. Android tools, read device info, you know what? My phone's plugged in. As long as I don't reset it by accident. I'll, I'll uh, let's do it, read device info. No Samsung device connected. I wonder what happens 
if I change the code here in the tool to see it as a Motorola. It really doesn't want to see my device. Device manager. Ah, oh, cool. That's a really nice addition to have. Okay, so it will do it even if it's not. Got it. That's really nice. Sweet. Set screen lock. Set FRP. Don't need to do that. Fast boot info. Bypass FRP. So this is the one that I've seen that should be universal. Is you just do this and you put in your own... Uh... Put in your own thingy. Whatever. Most of these are useless. And then you just do by MTP bypass. Let's see what happens. I didn't think that would work. There is a new version. This is eh, this is 1.4 beta. It's whatever. Here's all the settings for this: disable test mode, disable driver signature. You do need to disable driver signature for all of these to work understandable that some people won't want to do that because that can be very dangerous to your computer because that'll just allow anything to install <laughs> but this is a very nice tool and as long as we can prove that it's not an absolute headache let's do the cleaned one is that's going to be different from all others that have been uploaded here before, I'm sure. It's still going to detect it, and I don't know why. I wonder what I should get for dinner. I kind of want pizza. I already had ramen today. I don't know why I'm talking about dinner. Feud. Cool. And anytime now. Aha! There we go. So Defender did detect it. So far, it's okay. Malicious for no reason. Malware with malware bytes. Thinks it's a Trojan. <clears throat> Let's see. What does Google define that as? Okay, it doesn't say. What does Google define this as? Save a Trojan. Save a tool that looks legitimate but can take control of your computer. Okay. Huh. I don't know. It's... 6 out of 66, so I kind of trust it. Let's see here. Honestly, I don't think there's anything that should be worried about here. Well, I wish I had the like full version of Virus Total and could actually afford to pay for it because it'll actually emulate the environment. As you can see here, it's analyzing the program to see what it actually does. I don't think there's a big deal with this program though. I wonder if the cleaned version will run. Oh, that's annoying. Oh, I hate when people do that. I told you no. Anyway. Does the clean version run? It does not work at all. Okay. That's annoying. Process tree. Oops. So, let's 
This just says the files it opens, which are normal things. It's .NET stuff. I don't really see a problem here. Let me see, did the clean one run and it just doesn't show it? Oh, I guess I should have used that. <laughs> I have Sandboxy on my computer and didn't even realize it. Yeah, so cleaned, it breaks. That's good to know, though, and I have enough code access here, honestly, that I can probably remake this anyway, slowly over time, especially because I have the main form here. I don't really need to worry about a lot of this other stuff. Yeah, this stuff is dumb. I don't need to worry about that. There is a form for PC info. Why does this matter? I didn't even see that box. Well, uh, let me see. Let me run it again. PC info. Okay, I see it. I have to click yes or no. That's really stupid. So PC info. It'll give all the info on my PC. That's pretty cool. I like that. Nice. It's unnecessary in my opinion, but here's the about form, which we can see here. Okay, then. Form zero. What are you? Something. This might be the virus. <laughs> this really actually might be it. If he's anything like me, he hides button. Huh. Buttons be hidden. Let's see. Form zero. Not in any strings or anything. Is it called in a button anywhere? I don't think so. Let's see what this translates to. It has the word bootloader, so... Or this operation device must be have an unlocked bootloader. Okay, so this doesn't look like it's as bad as it sounds. Maybe it's just like some hidden form for a feature that's not added yet. That's what I would think of. So confused by it. So it was. That's why it's popping up as a virus. That's the problem right there. He used the, uh, I forget what it's actually called, but basically it's, uh, let's see if I can find it real quick. Infuse.net obfuscator. Confuser EX. He used Confuser EX to obfuscate the code. So that's why it pops up as a virus. Confuser basically destroys programs. And I'm not really surprised that the clean version doesn't work now that I know he's using Confused, uh, Confuser. So, makes sense. But a lot of these classes, I don't understand why they're here. I feel like they don't need to be. But you know what, it is what it is. I'm gonna attempt to recreate this tool if you guys would want that live streamed, I'll probably just do it with like music in the background or something because I'm not going to talk during a stream like that. Plus, if I can do a stream that way, I don't have to worry about if my girlfriend is home or not. I can just do it anyway. I see what some of this is for. Okay. This is for like selecting firmwares here. It's this list. Got it. All right. Well, once we start recreating this tool, we'll definitely have a better understanding of 
how it works, and I think it's actually a really nice tool to make. I just want to be sure that it's not a virus, and that's, you know, my biggest thing, is I don't want to give software to you guys or recommend software that's a virus. That's terrible. So... I'll eventually start recreating this tool, and we'll go from there. I know I'm totally leeching code. Honestly, I don't give a shit. I really don't. And, you know, if people have a problem with that, this kind of code is leeched all the time. And honestly, a tool that comes up as a virus on virus scanners should be open source like this. Because then you can at least see why. And now we know why this comes up as a virus. So I'm not that worried about even using it. But, at the end of the day, still a cool tool. Still very useful. And eventually I will make videos actually explaining how to use this tool or my custom one. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. This was like a longer, uh, a longer video. I guess if it was like a... Uh, if I was to take inspiration from any YouTuber on what type of video this is, it would be Mudahar for virus investigations, but this is software investigations. So, maybe we can make that a thing on this channel? You know, maybe once a month there's a software investigations, and you guys can recommend, like, third-party created software that I can attempt to... Wow, I don't know how often I was peeking in this video, and I apologize for that. There we go, that's better. So, software investigations, and I can get into making videos like this more often. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think, and maybe you guys can even make some recommendations for tools and stuff like that that I could rip. Everything from shoe bots to game bots to maybe even old stuff I've created or you've created. Shoot it over to me, and I'll look it over and be like, okay, this was a cool tool. It looks like you made something really cool here. And I can, I don't know, review your programs and stuff. I don't know. We'll figure something out. So I guess this is going to be called Software Investigations with TechX. And we'll go from there. So I'll talk to you guys later. Hope you guys enjoyed. Peace out.